Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, our channel. Um, my son uses this for his video games, just like I do too. Um, it's kind of just a anything and everything goes channel. I'm using a new mic for the first time, so I'm sorry if it sounds funny or fuzzy or anything like that. And I'm sure you're gonna hear my pets in the background. I have two cats and a border collie, so he's really huge and makes a lot of noise. Um, this story is, I don't know, I mean, I, it's true, it's a true story, and the circumstances in it make me feel like he couldn't have made this up. Now this man, his name is Jim James Denny. He is my great, great grandfather. He was my great grandmother's father. They lived in I believe Somerset, Kentucky. Here is his grave marker on findagrave.com. Woodstock Cemetery is where he is um, buried in Pulaski County, Kentucky. Um, and they lived in, oh, Barney's Branch near Woodstock between Somerset and Crab Orchard. If you go on Google Earth, you can still search for Barney's Branch and all of these areas. I really wanted to be able to bring it up on Google Earth for you guys to show you where, but I personally haven't been um, to where they lived. My, my grandmother went a couple years back, but I personally haven't gone there, so I couldn't say specifically exactly where this happened. Now, I'm just going to slowly read the story as I show it here on the screen. Um, this article is from the Courier Journal, East Kentucky Bureau and was published in Louisville, Kentucky, Monday, December 6th, 1954. Um, it was downloaded by my grandma on February of 2016. Gerald Griffin was the um, reporter here for this one. <clears throat> Okay, and excuse me if I pronounce anything wrong. I noticed these, um, like the sentences and the grammar isn't quite proper English. I don't speak proper English, so, you know, whatever. But the way it's written is sounds like, like you know, country, Kentucky-fied farmer language here. Woodstock, Kentucky, December 5th, led to a spot on his place by visions. So, led to a spot in his land, on his land, by visions. Jim Denny has dug up the bones of eight people. According to his visions, they were murdered, but... The best scientific guess is that Jim found the remains of Indians buried long ago. Yeah, see this sentence here. Time was when Denny wasn't bothered a nickel's worth about ghosts or spirits or visions that came in the night. But that was before the shadowy figures began hovering about the foot of his bed a year and a half ago. He could see them plain as day, but they faded out the minute he woke up his wife. Somehow, or somehow or another, she never could catch even a glimpse of them. And they kept coming back to his Pulaski County home until they had their way. 
They made old Jim move his workbench from under his cliff shelter that led to his astonishing discovery. <clears throat> Man in Helmet Appears It all started one night when old Jim couldn't go to sleep, although he had been laying in bed a long time. I could see him coming a long way off, the 73-year-old man said solemnly. A walking up that path that comes up to the house. He was the biggest man I ever saw. He was wearing a sort of helmet on his head like the ones the soldiers wear in battle, and he was carrying a spade over his shoulder. This big feller came right on through the door like as if it wasn't shut and locked, which it was. Then he just stood there at the foot of the bed and... Sorry. <laughs> making plans for my son this weekend to go to grandma's. This big feller came right on through the door like as if it wasn't shut and locked, which it was. Then he just stood there at the foot of the bed and looked at me without saying a word. When I woke up my wife, he disappeared. Old Jim is positive he wasn't asleep when he saw the silent phantom. He wasn't asleep a few nights later, he's sure when he had his next visitors from the spirit world, if that's what they were. Woman and girl are next. Like the first time, Miss Denny was asleep and Jim was just lying there in bed when he saw a woman and a little girl. They were dressed in light colored clothing, partly shrouded in mist, standing just where the first nocturnal vision had stood. They didn't say a word either, the gnome-like little farmer explained, which gnome-like, that, that's a, a very funny description to me because I, I imagine that's what they would call someone who's short, who isn't very tall, gnome-like, but I'm not sure what exactly they were trying to describe with that word. <clears throat> They didn't say a word, the farmer explained, just looked at me. I can't tell just how they looked, but that woman looked just like a dead woman. No, I wasn't exactly scared, Jim continued, but I woke up my wife again, and they faded out before she could get her eyes open. Jim never saw the man again, but it was not long before the woman and the little girl returned. That time, they came to him in a dream and delivered their messages. They couldn't rest easy. Scratching his bristly chin with a gnarled forefinger, old Jim spat through a vacancy in his teeth and shook his head wonderingly. The woman started complaining, Jim went on with a lowered voice, gazing at the shed where he keeps the bones. And see, that was a, oh, that was a spoiler alert. Whoops. <laughs> no, and anyone else reading this article for the first time would have any idea that there were any bones involved just had getting to this paragraph here. But there are bones, and, and this is why I, I wonder if dreams are the way that a spirit would communicate with you or a loved one. I'm a skeptical on anything that isn't scientifically proven. I'll just throw that out there. Statistics, mathematics, likelihood, evidence, proof. Though I, I just am a realist, you know. Um, but I do want your opinions. So feel free to comment. I, I want to know if anyone else's family or themselves have had an experience like this. Um, I'll talk a little bit at the end of reading this article about my experience um, personally. Um, so yeah, feel free to comment on anything, you know, any thoughts you have or opinions. Um, and please be respectful as these are my grandparents, my family members. Um, you know, this is a drama-free zone. And no arguing with anyone else either, or I will disable comments on my stuff. Just simple opinions. Remember what they're like. Everybody's got one. 
Okay, so the woman comes back in a dream. She started complaining as he gazed at the shed where he keeps the bones. She told me that she and the little girl had been murdered a long time ago and were buried under that cliff at the back of my house, right under the place where I had my workbench. They told me they couldn't rest there with me working right over them and would I please either move the bench or move them to a quieter grave. Jim's wife recalls that he woke her up that night and told her about the dream, but didn't do anything about it until three months ago when he moved the bench out, of, out in the yard under the cliff. In the meantime, he kept having dreams about the dead woman and the little girl. Finds a rock-lined grave. And that's when he started digging under the place where the workbench had stood so many years. And, sure enough, he dug into a grave lined with rocks. He kept on digging into, until he had uncovered the bones of eight bodies. The bodies hadn't been buried in coffins. At least there was no trace of any wood or metal in the graves. Just bones buried so long ago that some of them were crumbled upon being handled. Some of the skulls were whole, but came apart at the sutures when he tried to lift them out of the pit. Just above the breastbone of one of the skeleton, the accidental archaeolog archaeologist, okay, so that's what they call him, the, quote, accidental archaeologist, as he didn't mean to find these. Someone, he had a dream asking him to um, dig them up and move them so they could rest or move his workbench as it was disturbing them. So accidental archaeologist James Denny. That's funny. Um, just above the breastbone he stumbled upon a beautiful artifact, a utility implement known as a Celt or Celt. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. C-E-L-T. Which prehistoric peoples found satisfactory around the house. One end could be used for chopping, the other for grinding, and the sides for rubbing hides. The one Jim found is an almost perfect specimen highly polished and made of dark green stone, about eight inches long. The place where Jim Denny made his discoveries is on his 30-acre farm in Pulaski County at the head of the hollow on Barney's Branch, which if you search this on Google Earth, if you search for Barney's Branch, it will show up as B-A-R-N-Y-S. So that is the same area, um, but for some reason it's different on Google Earth than what this article, the way it's spelt here. Um, the 30-acre farm on, in the hollow on Barney's Branch, which runs into Clear Creek. It's about two miles up a dirt road, which connects with Kentucky 39. I'm guessing a state road. 39, Kentucky 39. Near the village of Woodstock between Somerset and Crab Orchard. Once a thriving community, Woodstock is hard to find now. A century and a half ago, Woodstock was considered for the, for the Pulaski County seat. But Somerset, Somerset won out. The Dennys live in a little frame house at the end of the dirt road on the far side of the branch. Oh, see, here we go with the cat crying. I'm sorry. And, yeah, I, I really tried really, really hard to um, find this on Google Earth. Um, maybe I can add a little clip at the end just to show you the vicinity of where this would have been. Because, like I said, I don't know the exact address or coordinates or anything. Was good Indian home. And this was an odd way to explain the distance here. Um, 
a few rods behind the house was an overhanging cliff, a rock shelter which some people call a rock house. A tiny spring trickles over one end of the limestone roof. It was an ideal site for the prehistoric Indians to take up homesteading. The rocky roof was sufficient to protect them from rain and snow. There was plenty of drinking water. The woods abounded in game and nuts, and there was enough level ground for their primitive agriculture. <clears throat> the bones uncovered by old Jim undoubtedly were the skeletal remains of the Indians buried perhaps centuries ago. Artifacts found in the graves indicate how they lived. Scattered here and there were bones of deer, including a jawbone with teeth still in it. Besides the ornamental celt, or celt, the digger found a couple of crude pestles for grinding maize and nut kernels. There were a few stone hoes and many rubbing stones, but few fragments of arrowheads. And um, I don't think he would have um, tried to get any money out of this anyway. I, I don't think he did this um, for money or fame or any other reason rather than he had the dream and he went and dug these up and then they needed to be investigated because they were human remains. So the very last article shows ruined much of the find. In his scientific approach, in his un- scientific approach. Denny probably destroyed any of his finds archaeological value. He even hired a man with a bulldozer to help him dig up the floor of the rock house. But she but he sure has a heap of old bones. Most of them he reburied. Most of them he reburied. Some of the fragments remain in a little pile under the cliff, but the biggest and best bones he stored in boxes protected in a shed near the house. The door of that shed is kept locked, and old Jim is the only one who knows the combination to the lock. When he has visitors, Denny graciously displays the things he keeps locked up in that shed. But he has posted a warning over the door, and he expects everybody to observe it. <clears throat> Penciled on a smooth board over the door is this epitaph, epitaph. Notice, do not swear in where these dead people are. Do not say slightly words about them. Notice, do not swear in where these dead people are. Do not say slightly words about them. Now, I personally, I, I'm 25 years old. Um, I am, some of these words, I don't even know what they mean. I mean, maybe this do not say slightly words. Maybe that does make sense if you happen to um, know, like, if that's just a way they talk in Kentucky or in other areas, you know, I, I know in the whole pop and soda thing and where you are in America or the world, you say things differently. So if, if you can give a um, small example of what that would mean, do not say slightly words about them. Um, I would love to hear any uh, information that you have in the comments. Now let's check these pictures out. Here they are looking over the bones. <clears throat> Some of the Indian bones. Lewis C. Miller from Somerset, Kentucky is on the left. And Jim or James Denny on the right. That is my great, great grandfather. And here he is again with the Celt or Celt. 
tool that was um, eight inches long in smooth green stone and then laid out on the workbench moved from its location under the cliff are some of the better preserved um, bones or remains that he um, uncovered after he dug. So basically, the way my grandma always told me this story was these spirits came, came to ask him to move them or move his workbench as it was disturbing them and they could not rest. They could not rest in the place that they were. This article says that he didn't, he didn't attempt to um, search for these bones and he didn't react to these visions or dreams until a year and a half later or so. So, um, you know, maybe he kept having the dreams Maybe um, he had a couple more visions or, you know, maybe something else happened that um, got him to go dig and, and see. And, and I would imagine, because I know, uh, especially back then, people didn't have a lot of money. Things were a lot harder to do. I would imagine um, getting a bulldozer to come do a personal dig on your land would be fairly expensive. I'm sure it is now these days. Um, so I'm sure that was a, you know, n not an easy thing to have done by my great great grandfather. I, uh, I, I wish more than anything I could have a conversation with him and, and really get the details that the article left out because I'm sure there was a lot of stuff that he said that they couldn't fit into this article. But if you see, it is like a full page on the newspaper um, just about this story. I... um. I, I really try hard to um, believe or find some sort of evidence that, that there is some sort of spirit world or spirit realm where your soul goes. Um, I'm not religious. I, I don't want to turn this into a heaven, hell, God or anything like that conversation. I, I don't want to get to talking about religion. It's like one of those things like politics and you just don't, it's just not good to do um, like public conversations about it because everybody feels so differently. And that's okay. Okay? You're not wrong if you feel differently than I do. You're just not me. So that's why you don't feel like me. You know what I mean? I think if people would remind themselves that when they go through situations that the other person isn't them and they shouldn't assume that they're going to feel or think logically the same way that you do, I think the world would be a lot better place if more people would realize that and, and remind themselves that. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, uh, let me see if I can bring up a photo of, this is my great-grandmother. So this is the um, find a grave for my great-grandmother, Essie Lou Denny Robinson. That is a picture of her on the left and my great-grandfather, Wayne Robinson, Wayne Ira Robinson. He was a um, private in the U.S. Marine Corps and fought in World War II, I believe. 
I can check his um, headstone here. He died October 10th, 2001. And I, I remember this. I was, mm, I was only about eight years old, I, I think, here. Um, a private in the U.S. Marine Corps, yep, fought World War II. He was 78 years old. This is their um, headstone. My great-grandmother, Essie, she passed away in 2016. She was 90 years old. She was ornery and funny and... She would go down to, um, if you're familiar with Indiana, the um, French Lick Casino and Hotel. My family has been going there for years, years and years and years. Um, my grandma, Essie's daughter, she probably goes to that casino once a month on average. And the same with my um, great-grandma Essie here. She would always go down to the boat. That's what she called it. Um, loved gambling, loved scratch-off cards. Um, I think the last time she went to French Lake Casino, she fell when she got there, and she hurt both her wrists to the point she had to wear um, like a cast brace on both of her wrists. So that was the last time she went, but... I think really until she was 87, 89, she was out, she'd drive out doing whatever she wanted, you know. So she, she had a very full life. Um, I had my son quite young, so um, she had a great, great grandson. So I think that was really cool. Um, Sorry for the family history here, but I wanted to give a little bit of background on this family, my family, who he was, um, you know, his daughter, and how, I, how the um, family tree comes down to me. So m my grandma is Essie and Wayne's daughter, and my dad is their grandson. So this is my father's side of the family. Now, let me see. Sorry, I just checked my notifications. Um, let me get you in the vicinity of where this, um, where he would have lived. Unfortunately, Google Earth on mobile doesn't have the little timeline thing that you can go back and forth um, you know 1997 to 2018 but let's just see if I can spell Barney's oh okay autocorrect branch Okay, well, this explains it as a river in Kentucky. A river in Kentucky. Okay, well, I don't think this is the same thing that's showing up on my um, desktop version of Google Earth. Well, that's unfortunate, huh? Let me... Let me get to it, and then I'll pop it back up. Okay, there is a huge difference between Google Earth on mobile and Google Earth Pro that I have on my um, laptop. When I search for Barney's Branch on mobile version, it, it just tells me um, there's no results. 
Oh my gosh. It just shows no results. But now um, I'm going to open up my uh, camera and try to show you on my laptop. I'm not sure how I can do like the screen sharing or whatever, so this is just going to have to do. And that is where it takes me when I search for Barney's Branch. Is right here to this little yard or house area. If I um, take it back, take it back, take it back, it looks like this. In that area. Now I am thinking that they lived right here and you can see the um, little coordinates or whatever so you can check it out I do know that there is absolutely no story about this online at all this video that I'm making here is going to be the first and only um, information about this story, which is uh, the, the main reason that I wanted to show it. I want to, um, for one, I want to share this story with other people and see what they think about it, um, see if they've had any similar experience as far as, um, you know, spirits or your loved ones or near-death experience where you know maybe you saw something maybe you didn't um, you know just just to conversate about it and see and see um, you know like I said if it happened to anyone else um, if you only have your mobile version of Google Earth, you can search for Walnut Grove, Kentucky, and it will take you here, Walnut Grove, and you go straight to the left. Let me zoom out just a bit here on my laptop so I can see. Walnut Grove to mm, over near Somerset there is the um, weird diagonal road and There she blows. Here is the Will that pin stay there? Well, I'll be able to find it myself. Um, oh, okay, here's this um, Charles Elgin Road. And I think this is where they lived. I'm thinking either either here in this area, right in this yard. Um, if you are familiar with this area, I would love, love any information you have on um, who this house belongs to right here. If you know who lived there or this one here. Now the reason I'm, I'm wondering about this one more so than this one is that this looks like a small ridge along the back of the yard as well as this you know like a ridge where he said there was the limestone rock house so and I know they didn't have a very big house and 
and um, you know my my family didn't have much money until my great grandfather started Robinson Construction in Bloomington, Indiana, and then. Well, I don't know if he started it in Bloomington, but Robinson Construction, um, that's my family. My maiden name is Robinson. That's my um, great-grandfather, Wayne Robinson. His brother, um, Kenton Robinson, he recently passed away. Um, he was the uh, owner or CEO of Robinson Construction up until he passed away. They might have sold it to somebody, honestly, I don't know. My grandfather sold him his half of the business and that was the last any of us ever saw or heard in, you know, about it. So, you know. <clears throat> and okay, it does give you coordinates on the mobile version down on the very right hand corner at the bottom. So this is where I think it, he found the bones. I, um, I'm not sure exactly. I, if I get an update, I will be sure to add it in um, on the description. So maybe in a couple months, if, you, if you're curious to know if I found out the address of the house where they um, dug up these bones, um, be sure to come back and check the description to see if there's been any updates on it. Um, I think that's it. I think I covered everything. I even, sh you know, gave a little bit of my family history. And, oh, that's the email from my grandma. <laughs> And yeah, the, um, the story here, the article, I can um, put this on my blog, on my WordPress, and I can add a link in so you can have a copy of it yourself if you'd like. I'm probably going to have to figure out how to do that, but I'll figure it out. I'm not very technically savvy. I usually need my husband to help me with these kinds of things, so... Again, I apologize for the lack of quality and, you know, me not knowing what to say. I, <laughs> this is probably only the um, third YouTube video that I have made where I talk, so bear with me here. I definitely, definitely am going to ask you to like this video and uh, maybe share it even. I think it's a great part of history. I think, I think a lot of people would like to hear it, especially the ones who are native to the area um, of Somerset, Kentucky. Um, I wish there would have been more investigation on this, on the bones and who they were and what happened. So anybody with any information on this, I would love to hear about it. And. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we covered it. So be sure and like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel. We post all kinds of different things. Video games, tutorials, artwork, you know, just any and everything I try to post. So it's going to be kind of an all-in-one type of YouTube channel.